Hello everybody, in uh, this lecture we are going to discuss the comparative inference procedures for two channel microarray data when more than two types of mRNA samples are under study. Uh, I will discuss this procedure using a very interesting case study and this case study is related to identification of genes associated with three prakrutis in Ayurveda. Ayurveda, as everybody knows, is an ancient system of medicine practiced in India since 15,000 BC. And the main assumption in this uh, system is the predisposition to a disease or selection of a preventive and curative regime is based on prakruti of an individual. What is prakruti? Prakruti is nothing but the body constitution of the individual. And Ayurva, in Ayurveda, there are following seven types of prakrutis described. One is Vata, Pitta, Kapha, and then their combination Vata, Pitta, Pitta, Kapha, Vata, Kapha, and all two, three together Vata, Pitta, Kapha. Out of these seven body constitution, the three are most important Vata, Pitta, and Kapha because these exhibit readily recognizable phenotypes and these are more predisposed to a specific disease. So it was decided to identify genetic markers associated with these three prakrutis for prospective disease condition and corresponding um, therapies. So an experiment was conducted at CSIR lab at Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. New Delhi. They decided to collect the data on gene expression values corresponding to three these three groups of individuals. Why gene expression values? Because they measure the variation at molecular level and then um, a variety of statistical tools were used and our software came handy which is a public domain open software to arrive at a set of 81 genes which have strikingly different profiles among the three prakriti types. These uh, 81 genes we identified using a set of statistical tools and then these were further validated by real-time PCR techniques and it was found that there was 66% validation among biologists and statisticians and it was um, found out to be very satisfactory. So I will explain this case study and a variety of statistical methods that we use to analyze this type of two-channel microarray data where we have more than uh, two conditions under study. So what was done is um, healthy individuals of these three types, Vata, Kapha and Pitta Prakruti were identified. This study was uh, conducted in the north part of India mRNA was extracted from the cells of these individuals from each group and they were uh, was hybridized on arrays, not on I am wrong here in the separately. Okay. Uh, experiment was done for males and females uh, separately. So I will uh, explain you the results of the experiments done on male groups. Each experiment consisted of three slides. And then uh, it being a two-channel microarray data, two types of samples were simultaneously hybridized on the array. And to distinguish the samples, we used the reporter molecules. The two reporter molecules used were Psi3, which shows green color after uh, uh, excitation of the laser beam. And the other was Psi5, which shows red color when, it is excited, when the slide is excited by the laser beam. The design used was die swap design. So what was this, what is this die swap design? On slide one, for Vata Prakruti sample, uh, reporter molecule added was Psi3. For Kapha Prakruti, it was Psi5. On slide two, for Vata Prakruti, a different type of reporter molecule was used. On slide one, it is Psi3. For slide two, it is Psi5. And Pitta Prakruti it is Psi3. On the next slide for a Pitta Prakruti 
the reporter molecule used was psi phi u and for cup of prakruti it was psi 3 okay so we have two observations on vata prakruti individual with different reporter molecules same thing for kapha and same thing for pitta but again one experiment consisting of three slides gives us only two observations from vata prakruti group two from kapha and two from pitta so it was decided that the um, data on two experiment will be combined so what we did is we uh, combined the gene expression values of these two experiments eventually we had six files corresponding to six arrays okay and then um, after deleting some spots where the hybridization was not properly carried out we had a data on about 20000 genes so let's see how this data is analyzed and we arrive at a set of genes which have a different profile in these three prakrutis it's a two channel microarray data so the first step was to take care of this dye bias so we plotted these ma plots the left panel shows the ma plots before normalization so if we look at this left panel uh, ma plots first corresponds to vata and pitta prakruti what we notice is um, the points are not symmetrically distributed along the line m equal to 0 if we imagine a line passing through m equal to 0 and there is a sort of non-linearity among the observations if we observe it very minutely same picture is for uh, pitta and kapha prakruti and kapha and vata prakruti so these three graphs before normalization indicate the presence of dye bias so we use a very well known technique of lowest normalization for taking care of dye bias to reduce the impact of dye bias so we carried out the lowest normalization on MA data for all these arrays and then the right panel shows the result after this effect of dye bias is uh, reduced to a certain extent so if you now look at the um, right panel MA plots the first corresponds to Vata and Pitta and then the line passing through um, vertical line passing through M equal to 0 that M minus estimated M is the normalized M value it, it passes through M equal to 0 and then the line passing through M equal to 0 is such that the points are symmetrically distributed around the line the lowest line lowest fit line is also passes through the cloud of points same picture is revealed for pitta kapha ma plot data and kapha and vata ma plot data this shows this graph shows that this lowest normalization is successful in reducing the impact of dye bias this was for these three slides and next picture is again similar to the another th group of three slides so the first step was lowest normalization to care, take care of the dye bias then we applied the quantile normalization and this is a picture after quantile normalization quantile normalization of course makes the empirical distributions of all these 12 arrays identical but it doesn't mean that we are we are discarded the variation due to the biological uh, causes all also it's not the case only the artifacts are uh, effect of artifacts is reduced to a certain extent and this is the picture that we get after quantile normalized data so we work with lowest normalized and quantile normalized data so again my data was uh, can be described in this way we had uh, 12 samples 4 from Vata Prakruti individual 4 from Kapha Prakruti and uh, 4 from Pitta Prakruti individuals there were around 20,000 genes uh, again uh, not 20,000 some were um, removed because of the flags or some problems that um, 
gene expression value data data so the genes uh, that we actually used in the analysis was 12580 so this 12580 rows correspond to the genes columns correspond to the samples and these columns are arranged in such a way that first four columns gives you the gene expression values for this 12580 genes uh, from vata prakruti column numbers 5 to 8 correspond to the gene expression values of kapha prakruti individuals and last four correspond to the pitta prakruti individuals it's important to note down this organization of columns because this information is necessary in later plots and in the analysis okay so again what we uh, want to do is our aim is to identify again the genes which have a distinct profile in a three prakrutis vata kapha and pitta and it's almost amounts to statistically speaking testing the hypothesis mu1 equal to mu2 equal to mu3 where mu1 is the average gene expression value for a vata prakruti individual in the entire population mu2 is the average gene expression value for a kapha prakruti individual in the entire population and mu3 stands for average gene expression value for a pitta prakruti individual in the entire population what we have is uh, only four observations from vata prakruti individual four from kapha and four from pitta prakruti individual corresponding to each gene so data is uh, not uh, it, it's, it's scarce data i mean not uh, that huge data Um, but uh, it's again an exploratory data analysis so let's try to apply appropriate test procedures and uh, arrive at the uh, genes which have distinct profile in three conditions which need to be further investigated by the biological tools so again what we did is to decide on the appropriate test procedures the first step was to verify the underlying assumptions of the test procedures and proceed further so this setup uh, of testing h not mu1 equal to mu2 equal to mu3 against alternative that at least one of these mu i is defer immediately um, tells us that one can use the one way anova test procedures if the underlying assumptions are satisfied so again begin with the testing of hypothesis uh, of normality for each in uh, so we use various exploratory and confirmatory data analysis tools we use one way anova wilcoxon test pairwise wilcoxon test kruskal valis test and so on some uh, techniques from multivariate analysis some techniques from cluster analysis one can also go for, go for uh, artificial neural network technique and support vector machines and so on all right so what we do is again uh, go on testing the normality for each gene using 12 observations and the number of observations is again small here still we decided to combine the three groups uh, each having four observations we bring them on equal platform by scaling these observations making mean of each of them to be zero and variance to be one and then we apply shapiro wilk test on each of these 12580 genes it was noted that the normality is accepted for 9600 genes and it was rejected for remaining 2980 genes here again for most of the genes normality is usually gets accepted and the justification for that comes from the famous central limit theorem in statistics because each gene expression value at each spot consist of a summary is a summary of large number of observations it's either a mean or a median or trimmed mean and our central limit theorem tells us that for uh, large values large sample size this uh, summary measures mean trimmed mean or median has a symptotically normal distribution and this is reflected in the fact that out of 12000 for ut genes normality gets accepted for 9600 genes 
Uh, okay, so will we proceed further? Mm, the G for 2,980 genes normality is rejected on the basis of 12 observations. So we conclude that it is rejected in at least one of the three groups, Vata, Pitta and Kapha. And so we cannot go for a one-way ANOVA app test. So we apply a corresponding non-parametric version uh, of the, for the test of testing mu1 equal to mu2 equal to mu3 and such a test is Kruskal Valley's test. So we applied Kruskal Valley's test on all these 2980 genes and the result was 40 genes. For 40 genes it was rejected at 1% and for 381 genes it was rejected at 5% uh, level of significance. Uh, so these 40 genes or these 321 genes are of our interest. Okay, then uh, we move to the uh, data matrix where normality was accepted. To decide whether we can use one way ANOVA T test, one way ANOVA F test, we have to verify the second assumption of uh, underlying this procedure and that is of equality of population variances. So for all these 9600 genes, we apply Bartlett test to test the equality of variances. The result was it is accepted for most of the genes, 8,562, and it was rejected for remaining 1,038 genes. So for a group of genes for which normality was accepted, equality of variances is also accepted. We applied one-way ANOVA app test. The result was there were 107 genes for which equality of means was rejected at 1% and 640 genes for which equality of means was rejected at 5%. So these 107 genes really have a distinct profile in Vata, Pitta and Kapha Prakruti individuals. So this needs to be further investigated. Uh, for the genes for which normality is accepted but the equality of variances is rejected, we used one way ANOVA, Welch app test. The result was um, for 19 genes, the equality of means was rejected at 1%. For 67 genes, it was rejected at 5%. So these 19 or the 67 genes are of interest. They have a different profile in Vata, Pitta and for Prakruti individuals. Again, these three test procedures tells us that uh, genes, these many genes do have a different profile in three Prakrutis, Vata, Kapha and Pitta. But to investigate further, I mean, what is the type of the difference, whether it is overexpressed or whether it is underexpressed, we go for corresponding pairwise test. So for a group of genes, which were identified to be differentially expressed by non-parametric Kruskal Valley's test, we applied pairwise Wilcoxon rank sum test. For the um, for the genes where we applied one way ANOVA app test, we applied pairwise T test, and for the remaining genes where we applied one way ANOVA Welch app test, we applied pairwise Welch test. So these pairwise tests tell us that what, the, what are those genes which are, which are equally expressed in two prakrutis but distinctly expressed in a third prakruti. To, um, I mean, that much information we get from the p-values of pairwise test, but then whether it is overexpressed or whether it is underexpressed, to get this much information, this information we go for a further graphical technique of strip charts. So, these are the strip charts corresponding to genes with uh, ranks 1 to 9. These are top 9 genes uh, according to the one-way ANOVA app test. So what we notice from the first uh, strip chart is this rank 1 gene has a profile of the, of the following type. It is overexpressed in first group, that is a Vata group. 
इट इज अंडर एक्सप्रेस इन कफ प्रकृति के सेकंड ग्रुप दैट इज कफ प्रकृति एंड इट इज अगेन ओवर एक्सप्रेस इन द पित्त प्रकृति दैट इज द थर्ड ग्रुप सो दिस रैंग वन जीन इज सच दैट इट इज एक्सप्रेस एट अ लो लेवल इन कफ प्रकृति इंडिविजुअल सो दिस मे बी interpreted as a marker gene for a kapha prakruti individual because it has a low expression in this kapha prakruti but they are more or less equally expressed in the vata and pitta prakruti for rank 2 gene the picture is uh, this rank 2 gene is over expressed in vata prakruti and more or less same in the kapha and pitta prakruti if you go to the rank 9 gene rank 9 gene indicates that okay it is uh, this gene is expressed at a low level in the pitta prakruti at a medium level in kapha prakruti and it is over expressed in the uh, vata prakruti so this tip charts and um, p values of pairwise test help us to assign the profile for each of these differentially expressed genes so if you look at this rank 1 gene the p values in vata and kapha prakruti is 0.011 indicates that it doesn't have same profile in vata and kapha prakruti p value for vata and pitta prakruti is 0.54 0.458 indicating that the hypothesis of equality for Uh, average of uh, average in expression under vata and pitta prakruti may be same p value for kapha and pitta prakruti is again 0.002 it indicates again that the average expression uh, of this gene in kapha and pitta prakruti may be different so these p values and uh, uh, strip chart corresponding to rank 1 gene helps us to designate a symbol plus minus plus to rank 1 gene so this plus minus plus designates its profile of the rank 1 gene indicating that it is over expressed in vata individual sorry uh, over expressed in vata individual but under expressed in kapha prakruti individual and over expressed in the um, pitta prakruti individual so on similar lines we can identify the profile of each of these um, top genes and then that helps us to produce this table this table is the most important part of our rep uh, report it gives the differential behavior of top 81 genes so uh, this rank 2 genes rank 4 rank 14 19 31 32 38 and 40 these are the genes whose annotation whose identity can be obtained from our data matrix or first data matrix these are the genes which can be uh, designated as marker for vata prakruti individuals the next group of uh, next group of genes rank 1 3 5 u 12 13 and so on these are marker genes for kapha prakruti individual next group 6 9 17 20 33 and 69 these uh, genes with these ranks whose again identities can be obtained from the data matrix are the marker for pitta prakruti individuals similarly on the basis of strip charts and the p values we can identify what are the possible markers for these three prakrutis or which discriminates the uh, prakruti so this is the behavior of top 81 genes and we are able to identify this using a variety of inference test procedures which can also be validated by multivariate analysis tools and uh, cluster analysis so what we did is out of 12580 genes we identified 81 genes having different profile in three conditions with strip charts and pairwise comparisons the profile can be decided and then this was validated by biologists using rt pcr techniques the result was it was valid the validation was 66% and uh, 
and it was found to be very satisfactory all these results are published in journal of translational medicine in 2008 thank you